Hi everyone, I thought this could be a little bit of an interesting project to share with you. I've had this sat in the workshop for a while and it's a Colin Bus profiling machine, little CNC uh, sort of profiling and engraving machine. It was bought by a friend of mine some time ago. They were available as a kit from uh, Elector magazine. Um, I'm not sure how much my friend got it working. Uh, I think he did do some bits and pieces with it, but it was awfully clunky to use. Um, I seem to remember it had a parallel port interface on it. It wasn't as easy as just throwing G-code at it. There was a lot of uh, steps in the workflow. So a couple of years ago, I did get it working on this uh, little Gerbil board, which is a, a shield you can get for the Arduino Uno. Um, uh, I've got another one just here. And that did work, um, but the stepper motor drivers were these little Palulu style boards. They're very popular in 3D printers. And I, it didn't seem that it was man enough really for the stepper motors. So I shelled out on eBay and got, got some actual uh, stepper motor drivers, uh, just some basic ones there. And I'm going to have a go at rigging those up uh, to this, you can wire external stepper drivers straight onto these headers sort of independent of the uh, the little driver board you can plug on it might use this original power supply make up a power supply out of it for the logic side of things um, also this machine was designed to use with a, a sort of dremel type multi-tool thing this has got some kind of copy uh, copy dremel on it which i seem to remember is very noisy and gets very hot um, isn't ideal for it. The bearings in it seem to be completely shot. So I did have this, uh, I think it's a 400 watt um, CNC spindle kicking around in the workshop. Uh, it's got a power supply, speed and direction controller. So I thought it might be rather fun to try and mount uh, a proper spindle on it, which will give us a, a usable collet chuck, which gives us a lot more choice for, for tools. It's a lot, a lot nicer really than just using the little Dremel tool. I've already got a selection of mounts for that. Um, that shouldn't be too bad. Um, USB plug on the back. Uh, the original control system, it consisted of just a single large board. I don't even know where that is now. Um, I didn't want to reuse that. Um, and the whole lot fitted inside the box. It was quite neat. But I think I'm going to go away from that with all these new power supplies and bits. It's going to be much bigger. I think a standalone box would be more sensible. And I could also use that for other CNC experiments if it all just unplugs. And I got a three axis controller. So we'll try and build a three axis controller out of this with a spindle control. Um, I was thinking about maybe building it into a PC case, something like that. But it might be more fun to just assemble all the electronics on a uh, a single chassis of some sort and then try and use this bit of kit to make its own enclosure um, which could be kind of fun I don't know what we'll make it out of yet so anyway I seem to have all the bits I need it's just really a case of uh, getting down to the grunt of doing the wiring and everything and uh, then we can think about trying to actually make it work and I've got a couple of projects in mind that this thing would be quite useful for uh, a few bits and pieces I need to make so it'll be really good to have it working. Right, so I cut a piece of MDF in the end. I was thinking about possibly, I thought I had a nice thick sheet of aluminium kicking around somewhere I could have cut a piece off of, but it's not easily findable at the moment. So I've opted for a thick sheet of MDF off of a big sheet I had lying around. Uh, I'd roughly measured what space everything would take up and I figured that uh, if I can get all of the control kit bolted down onto this base in a sensible configuration it'll be a nice way of just wiring it all up and then uh, it's a nice little test bed and because I was hopefully intending to make some kind of enclosure and panel and everything using the machine itself um, I thought this would be a good start. We can then come up with some kind of design of something that sits on there nicely and uh, maybe gives us a bit of a control panel on the front. Uh, maybe even some kind of DRO readout to uh, just make it a little bit more user friendly than just the bare Arduino board. So I think uh, an experiment with a few different layer options, just have a bit of a brainstorm about how things are gonna go. Uh, then really it's just a case of wiring it all together, 
and seeing if anything catches fire or uh, if any fires need putting out. Um, so let's crack on. Okay, so a little bit of work on um, sort of screwing things down to the board and layout. Um, we've got uh, stepper drivers in place, um, got the toroidal transformer locked down. I'll have to find maybe a couple of bridge rectifiers um, for that. We've got the little logic board there, and here's a nice blank piece of uh, very board which uh, will be useful for possibly any little power conditioning circuits, voltage regulators, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's all it's all there. I've made this little back panel which has got the, actually it's the, uh, the original lid from the old column bus unit and I've put the uh, fused main switch and connector in there. I thought for now that would be good to, to have fairly secure, keep the main side as safe as we can. But the, the other plugs and switches and things I'm just going to leave on fly leads for now because I think the unit's going to end up making some of its own panels for the other bits so it'll be, it'll be a lot a uh, lot easier like that. Uh, we've also had the added bonus of the 3D printer packing in um, so I can't print any components at the moment waiting for a new power supply for that. So we're pretty much ready to start the wiring job but before we wire it all in I'm going to upload the firmware, the, do the Gerbil firmware, to the little Arduino board here, uh, just so that we know that it's all the input and output pins and stuff are assigned properly before we go connecting it up to everything. Because I've no idea what firmware this this Arduino had on it before. So, do a quick flash of the firmware, and I'll throw some basic settings onto that. Uh, just configure it roughly uh, to how we want it. Uh, then it's a case really of. Yes, yeah, a relatively dull and boring wiring job. So we'll see how that goes. Right, as I said, we're just going to flash the firmware uh, onto the, the Arduino. It's dead simple. You just download um, the, the, the Gerbil firmware from GitHub and literally just flash it on there. Um, so we'll just compile and flash that. There's no settings or anything to change, nothing in the code to change because you configure everything once it's uploaded just via the serial port. Um, we've got a low memory error there but this is something to do with the Gerbil 1.1 doesn't seem to affect its actual uh, operation. Uh, and then we've got the the list of various settings which I'll have to just go through. It's a bit laborious but I know roughly what the various limits and things were on the original column bus so I'm just gonna make that very similar but once it's all up and running this is something that you have to tweak anyway and it can easily be tweaked from from just a serial connection um, so that should be the only time that you have to really flash any uh, the firmware to it unless there's a significant upgrade so that's all done um, really can't put the wiring job off any longer so uh, time to break out the DuPont connectors and the soldering iron and some heat shrink and see what we end up with Okay, well it's been a little while since uh, I've been on this because other jobs have come along, you know how these things are. But I have got the electronics mostly sorted now. Um, you may have just seen a time lapse of it. Uh, I didn't go into extreme detail. It's all basically just wiring modules together. So there's nothing, there's no witchcraft going on here just yet. Um, so we've got a whole load of power supplies. That's a... Um, a 40 odd volt power supply for the main spindle motor. I've got a little transformer here which gives me out two 18 volt AC supplies, one of which is being used for the stepper motor drivers, the other of which is coming through this little regulated power supply I've made here to give 8 volts into the uh, V in pin on the Arduino. 
I want to be able to run this without a computer plugged into it at some point. So um, I thought I'd give the Arduino its own power supply as well. Now I've got the old connectors off of the original Colin bus controller and I've identified the wires. These are all wired into the three stepper motor drivers. Uh, and I've got a, a couple of filter caps just on the, the supply for the, uh, the, the stepper driver motors, uh, just to take any ripples out of it. That should all be fine. So it's all wired up. I've tested the power supplies. I know the Arduino works. I've got the Gerbil 1.1 firmware flashed on it, um, which I did a little while ago. Um, so really all there is to do now is we'll just link up the cables to the stepper motors. I'm not going to bother with the end stop wires at the moment, which I've just brought out to connectors here because that'll be a whole other can of worms to open. Just interested at the moment to see if uh, our uh, stepper drivers are working. So I've labelled everything up to make things fairly easy. So we've got what's the Y axis there. That's Z. That's X. Wherever that's gone. X. And we got Y over there. Uh, I've already metered out the stepper motors. There seems to be no weird short circuits or anything. So uh, we've had a look at the electronics. We'll just transfer to the other side of the table. Um, we'll try and talk to the machine, well, to the controller from the computer over the USB connection and see if anything moves. Okay, so we're back in the machine. I've removed this, oh, removed this top cover so we can see the top lead screw. Let's just see what's going on a bit better. Um, I mean, this has all been rather well put together. I haven't changed anything round much about the actual uh, device itself. Um, but these stepper motors haven't moved for a while. So let's just connect. I'm using Universal G Code Sender. Um, I just found it was a useful way of giving us some jog and shuttle controls for it. Let's see if we've got all the motors the right way around. So we should be able to just connect this and we'll turn on the power supply to the actual stepper drivers. I've got an OK back from the system which is a good sign. Um, I'm just going to double check all of these settings I've taken from the, the old controller that we had running it as a test so I'm just going to make sure there are steps per millimetre and speeds and everything are sensible which they are so we should be ready to go let's give it a try then so we'll start with the X axis okay it certainly seems to work and we'll do some Y axis and we'll try the Z axis yeah, that seems happy in both directions everything's moving in the correct directions okay so now we're just in a position to test whether we're missing any steps or anything if it's coming back to where it should be um, while being operated by the g-code so I'm gonna make a little mark on the corner here just where the uh, shadow is and I'm gonna set that at zero I'll hit reset zero so now everything everything's at zero and I should be able to move this away somewhere in all the axes I think and let's move the Z somewhere else as well just for a laugh right so it thinks it's moved all these distances away and if we hit reset zero sorry return to zero if we hit return to zero that should put it right back where we left that mark Perfect. Okay, so um, what to do next? Uh, 
I need to make a. Um, I need to find a way of mounting the bigger spindle on here because uh, the, the original Dremel mount that came with the thing, which was this, just yeah, isn't going to work. So this plate, which originally held the Dremel to the front, uh, isn't quite wide enough for these uh, the, 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 these motor mounts. Now I think uh, I should be able to just make a wider plate. I found a piece of six millimeter um, aluminium stock kicking around, so I can use that. And I'm going to just, I've made a template, this is in a sort of one-to-one -one scale of the adapter plate I need to make. So I should just be able to cheat really, cut this out, and I'm just going to stick this template onto the sheet of aluminium and use it as my drilling guide. So I make sure all the centres of the holes are near as damn it. This isn't hyper-precision work. And then we can mount the spindle onto here, get some wiring done, make sure that works. And then we might be in a position to think about actually um, doing some carving. And the only thing really left to do is try and sort these limit switches out, which are always a notorious problem with um, uh, Gerbil shields. We might need to add some filtering because there's some quite long lengths of cable going on and they're not shielded or anything. They're running straight in with the, the step of uh, cables. So there's likely to be a lot of interference. So I might come up with some filter design just to make that reliable because it'd be nice then if we can get the machines to just home and then you know it'll be ready to go. We can make some proper uh, bits of g-code for it and we know it's going to behave as predictably as possible. So I think I'll, we'll get that motor mount made and crack on with it. Okay, so we're doing rather well, I think. Um, made this new adapter plate up, which uh, compared to the old one is just a, a little bit wider um, so that we can get to all the nuts and bolts. Uh, and that should fit on there quite nicely. Uh, I've popped some uh, studs in there, which I've threaded into this six millimeter aluminium plate for now. Whether that'll be strong enough or not, we'll see. I can always modify it at a later date, but for now it should be fine to get us up and running. So really just need to get the spindle assembled um, mount this all back on here I think actually as I remember getting these in is going to be awkward without dismantling it we'll see what we can do and then we'll need to wire up the spindle I think I'm just just for testing I'm just going to uh, take the wire to the outside of here we can link that up to the speed controller then we should have a working spindle I've got a set of collet chucks for uh, yeah set of collets for this collet chuck and we know that the x y and z all works okay this is going to be quite weighty um but i don't think it's going to be any heavier than the old setup which had the dremel and all these random bits on it it should should be all right and it's it's quite a decent um, motor on here anyway so we'll get all that fitted up and really we should then be in a position to actually carve something so I think before I try messing around with the the end stops working out how that's going to work in the homing system I think it might be fun to just um, do up some g-code maybe draw some shapes maybe we'll cut something out of this acrylic sheet that's already on here before cleaning the bed and everything up just to see whether it's gonna work and uh, you know whether this is uh, is gonna be successful but I think yeah, every confidence. So we'll get this put together and maybe try and carve something.
Okay, got everything wired up. The spindle's now wired in. I think the screws have been tightened. Um, it all seems to be up together. The spindle works and it spins in the right direction. So that's a good start. I think we're probably ready to try and send it some G-code. So I've just made a basic um, few shapes there and I've got a ridiculously oversized end mill because I did realise that I don't have any smaller end mills kicking around. Um, so it should just be a case of starting the spindle up and hitting go, which can always be a bit exciting when you're firing up machines for the first time. I've already run the G-code with the cutter off the, uh, the base, so let's see what happens Okay, well I've stopped it there after the first um, the first circle that it cut because I set this purposely in the G-code to cut incredibly um, finely. I'm only taking half millimetre plunges at a time and I think I'm running it something like 150 millimetres uh, uh, per minute, uh, which is a fraction of what it's actually capable of. Just wanted to see what would happen if, uh, if we tried that out and just to make sure nothing was going uh, to go pop it seems more than happy with that speed. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna um, put some more G-code together that runs everything a little faster. Maybe we'll go and try and take one millimeter cuts with it. I don't, you know, it should be able to be doing this much, much faster. Um, then we'll have a go at doing the circle again and running the rest of it to, to cut the other shapes. But uh, yeah, it seems fine. It doesn't seem to be wandering or missing steps at the moment, so yeah, not a bad first test. Right, I've loaded up some G-code and I've zeroed it up. Held it off a little bit there. Um, we're going to go fairly quick this time. Did a test cut just now, which seemed alright. I'm just going to try and cut a couple of shapes in this MDF and uh, see how we get on. <laughs> Right, so that's finished doing its thing, um, and I'm quite pleased with that actually. Um, it's not the ideal milling bit, I, it's not. It's a metalwork bit and it's very blunt and it's scorched a little bit here and there, but it's not skipped any steps. Um, we've got three shapes here, milled to three different depths. Uh, it seemed to cope with it quite nicely. So, yes, I think it's uh, done everything I needed to do at this stage. A little bit more tweaking to do and I need to sort out the business with the end stops so that it can home properly. But that's just minor stuff really. <clears throat> um, more majorly I need to find space in the workshop to put it because the workshop's a mess at the moment. And um, when it's in there we can chop some more stuff, make some proper mess then and uh, tweak it and make it do exactly what we want. So uh, yes, eventually uh, that's been quite successful. So uh, we'll come back to this at a later date. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.